What's going on, Glorifiers? And welcome back to Dear Glory. I'm Mariah Lee, and today we're going to tackle one of the most crucial steps, crucial aspects of your journey as an artist, figuring out what route you should take as an artist. So we're breaking this down into four sections so that you can understand what route best fits you as an artist. We're going over section one, the gallery route. Section two, the independent route. Section three, the art fair route. And section four, the e-commerce route. So if you're a beginner artist trying to navigate your way through the art world, or you might be an artist that's in their career just looking to take a step back and redefine what your goals are, redefine what route you want to take. This video is going to break down those different routes, those different paths, so you can understand where you're going and how you're getting there to achieve your dream. And you know what, guys? I want you to make sure you stick around, make sure you listen up, because I got some really cool and exciting opportunities to help you get on the right track uh, with your career. So listen on the way. I got some stuff in the description that you're gonna wanna download. Now, before you choose a path, you need to understand your route as an artist. It's vital to just take a moment and just, you know, reflect and on what route you wanna take as an artist and what do you wanna achieve? You know, who do you want to be? How will you get there? Why do you exist as an artist? And what route will make that existence possible? And what do you want to you have seen happen at the end of your career? Do you envision going the gallery route with your work hanging in the most prestigious galleries like the Gagosian, the Davis Werners, the Pace Galleries, the Hauser and Werfs, or you know, the, the Tate Moderns? just some of the most respected galleries in the art ecosystem, or maybe you have a different vision, like going the independent route, producing your own exhibitions, being a boss, and by the end of your career, you're known as this independent artist that really did their thing. Maybe you're interested in going the fair route, the art fair route, directly connecting and touching the collectors and your audience through art fairs, or maybe you're considering leveraging the power of e-commerce. Maybe you have some strong marketing skills you wanna to put to use and the power of Instagram and TikTok using those powers to sell your work globally directly from your studio. Get clear on the route you wanna take. Get clear on your goals, your professional goals, your artistic goals, your personal goals, and figuring out what route is best for you to take to get there. That big question, what do you want? What do you want? God damn it, artists, what do you want? <laughs> if you're a fan of The Notebook, you picked up on that reference, but the big question is, what do you want? Anyway, I know that figuring this out can be very overwhelming. Figuring out why do you exist and what path you gotta take. To go along with this section, I've created a little roadmap worksheet to help you get started. I've created a downloadable career path worksheet and checklist. That's in the description below, and it's designed to help you quickly outline your short-term and your long-term goals, create an action plan, track your progress, and figure out the path that's best for you. It's a quick stop roadmap, so make sure you grab it. It's in the description below. Now let's get started with section one, the gallery route. This is for the artists that want to be represented or want to work with a gallery. It's the traditional path that a lot of artists aspire to. It involves getting your work represented by galleries that promote, that sell, and they sometimes, they even manage your career. The gallery route can offer you that prestige and that recognition that comes with having your work shown in these established spaces, right? It can open doors to museum exhibitions, to public projects, and to other high profile opportunities, as well as high profile collectors. Now, before we go even further, let me tell you, I wanna tell you, every gallery ain't the same. Every gallery is not on the same level. It's not on the same page. There's levels to this gallery's ish. So if this is the route that you're taking, listen up, let me break it down for you. I wanna start with the super duper stars, the top of the top, the cream of the crop. Those are your Gagosians, like we said, David Zwerners, you know, your Pace Galleries, your Hauser and Worth, your Tate Modern, it's your A-list gallery. Then you have the galleries that are floating somewhere below, the B-list gallery. The ones that are still really amazing and absolutely amazing additives to any artist's career. These galleries do really amazing and really well in the primary market. They participate in fairs. They have collectors who are diehard fans, honorable and loyal to their galleries. They still do be gatekeeping. They still do have their noses a little high in the air. And you know what? I'm not saying it's okay, 
but according to Magnus Resch, they're bringing between 50 and $250 million a year in revenue. That's a lot. They're doing amazing. These are your galleries like Periton or maybe even the White Cube. You know, that 50 to $250 million revenue range, it's amazing. Do you know what price range has to be in these galleries for them to reach that revenue or what projects they have to be involved in to reach that amount of revenue, what high profile artists they have to be working with, how much art they have to be selling to reach that amount of revenue. They're doing amazing. They're doing great. Both the galleries and the artists, they're doing okay. They're making it. They're living a good life. Now, Resh also makes a point to mention that these galleries have nationwide brand awareness but less of those of, you know, the A-listers, less than the top tier, less than the cream of the crop, whose revenue, according to him, is reaching somewhere around the billion dollar mark. So, P.S., look, if you want to actually read and learn a little bit more about what Magnus Rush is talking about, I encourage you guys to purchase How to Collect Art by him. The link to purchase this is in the description. Let me know if you guys get it. We actually reading it right now in the Patreon. So join the Patreon if you want to be a part of that conversation. Now I want to be super clear. Most artists will not make it to the point of the A's and the B's. I'm not trying to be discouraging. I'm just being realistic to reach it to the A list or the B list is a shoot for the stars, land on the stars situation. You have to have precision and luck. Okay. So in my opinion, the next level of the gallery is the one of the most, one of the most important, if not the most important, in my opinion, the only reason I'm referring to them as C level is because we're talking to ABCs. But you know what they say about the C level students. They say C level students run the world. So drop in the comments if you was a C level student, I'm gonna know a little bit about you. Now, these are the galleries that are doing amazing. They're doing amazing work. They're still having amazing profit and they're allowing a very large number of artists to be able to have sustainable careers. That is the goal. I don't care what you say. A lot of people's goals might be to be at the A level or the B level gallery. That's amazing. Congratulations to you. I'm so proud of everyone who gets there. But let me tell you something. If you have a sustainable career as an artist, you have already outdid the odds because we all know we all know the starving artist is a real thing. It's a saying for a reason. So if you have a sustainable career, you've already did the thing. Let's be real, every artist is not gonna become the Beyonce of the art world. Some artists will have really amazing careers, you know? Some will be Danny Lay, no shade, because I really love her, but they will be able to take care of their family while still being able to have artistic, professional, and economic success, respectability by their peers, and operate in their business ethically. These artists need this level of gallery. And because of platforms like Instagram and Artsy, these galleries, brand awareness is doing pretty amazing. It's doing pretty well. They're working with artists that they love. They're attending art fairs. They're finding success at these art fairs. They're having exhibition. They're selling out these exhibitions. This level of gallery is it, in my opinion. I have so much respect for them. We have to have respect for these galleries because it is still very, very, very difficult to maintain a gallery at this level. To find this level of success, is hard. So artists that are here, artists that want to be on this path, they're working hard. The galleries that are here, they're working hard and they're they're achieving a great, great level of success. And these galleries are the galleries that allow collectors to collect artists that are doing amazing in their emergence. Still affordable for some. And the artists are usually pretty serious about their practice at this point. So contrary to all the biggest art news headlines and the way history may one day be written, these galleries are so important to assisting artists and maintaining an amazing, sustainable career. And these are your galleries like your Claire Oliver Gallery and your Monique Meloche, both galleries that are in Chicago. Now, according to Resh, who calls these galleries Gamma Galleries, there are around nearly 4,000 around the globe. The last type of gallery I'm gonna talk about are the D-list galleries. Now, don't shade the D-list galleries because they're still passing. Those galleries are more local than anything else. These galleries have very little brand awareness. They're not really known anywhere, but in their cities, in their local areas. They don't show up for art fairs, really. They represent artists you likely, really probably haven't heard of, unless you're local or maybe even regional. These galleries are still so huge for the gallery ecosystem, for the arts ecosystem in general. They're important locally and 
they also have a lot of impact on the artists having success outside of the city that they're living in. It's important to know that this route, this gallery route is highly competitive at any level, even at the local level. Even locally, there are so many people competing to be at these galleries. It requires building strong, strong relationships with curators, gallery owners, and other influential people in the art world. You'll need to be prepared to network, to attend events, and to continuously prove the value of your practice as an artist. If this path really resonates with you and you want more guidance on how to navigate it successfully, look, I'm hosting a masterclass called A Blueprint for Success for New Artists on Saturday, October 19th, between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. This class, and, and that's Eastern time, this class is gonna provide you with a clear, actionable roadmap to avoid all of those common pitfalls and help you make informed decisions to, you know, help get you on the right path and help build your career. So don't miss out. The details are in the description below. Now, next, let's explore section two. I love this route. It's one of my favorite routes. This path is for the artist who wants the freedom to produce their own exhibition and take full control of their careers while maintaining the professionalism and the sensibility of gallery representation. Now, hear me when I say that. Maintain. You got freedom. You have artistic freedom. You are in control of your creations. You are in control of your own career. You are in so much control, but you still need to maintain professionalism and the sensibility of gallery representation, which means you need to have oil in your machine. You understand what I'm saying? If you go this route, you might build a team. You might have a manager, a curator, a PR specialist, a marketing team, or it might all just be you, but you're gonna have to learn those things. You're gonna have to learn everything about how to manage your own career. You're gonna have to know how to curate your own shows. You're gonna have to understand some PR and know how to reach out to media yourself. You're gonna have to understand how to create a sub stack or understand how to create a sequence of emails that's gonna go out to these people that need to know what you're doing within your career, right? Um, and I think you need all this information anyway, even if you're working with the gallery, but if you're going the independent route, you're going to have to build a lot of skills to go this route. Or you're going to have to put people around you, build a team that have these skills. You're the one calling the shots, co-curating or even curating your shows and building your brand. And the best part about it is you can still aim for gallery representation or gallery exhibitions, museum exhibitions in the future. This can end up being a really amazing hybrid approach. Everybody might not agree with me on this though. So, you know, this is my experience. So if you love your idea of managing your own career, managing your own collectors yourself and holding this specific imager yourself is gonna require a clear, clear vision of where you want to go. This route comes with its own set of challenges, even facing challenges like maybe even limiting your possibility of eventually getting into these galleries. And you have to be comfortable with that. Think of a music artist who is independent. Let's take someone like Chance the Rapper, for instance, who went on to win many awards. He still did the thing and he was independent. He even won a Grammy with ever signing a major or a big deal with a major label. In fact, he's really declined several major offers over the years with the choice to maintain his independence and have full control over his career, his creative direction. I'm not sure where his career is now, but I know in the past he's had really, really amazing, incredible success being independent. So if you're considering producing your own exhibitions or managing your own career, going the independent route, but you need a little bit of guidance, trust me, I love that. And I got you covered on that. So on October 16th, I'm hosting a session on effective exhibition planning. It's free. We're gonna cover essential topics like process development, budget, and pricing your work. It's a short, focused, 30 minute session that's gonna give you the tools you need to plan and execute a successful exhibition. Uh, that's free, remember that. Now, if you wanna talk one-on-one -on -one about managing your own career, schedule a session with me, a consultant session with me. That's at the link in the bio as well. You're gonna have to take a, a compatibility quiz first so I can gain some information about you before we hop on our free 15 minute call. Um, but yeah, do that and keep that, keep in mind this webinar, Effective Exhibition Planning is free. So join it, just come, okay? Now let's go ahead and move forward. Moving on to the next section, which is section three, another exciting path. It's the art fair route. 
Now, to be clear, we're not talking about the biggest art fairs in the world, like Art Basel and Freeze and the Armory Show or even Expo Chicago. Instead, we're focusing on local and regional art fairs where you can showcase and sell your work directly to collectors. Now, in Houston, Texas, that will be like the Bayou Art Festival. It's huge. It happens every single year. It's at Memorial Park, and they have upward of 200, 300 selected artists come and set up their own booths, uh, sell their own work to many folks that are walking through the festival. This outdoor festival is attracting like 20,000 people every year and it's offering the visitors the opportunity to meet with the exhibiting artists, buy one of ones, buy one of a kind artworks, enjoy food, enjoy music, and enjoy entertainment. Many artists take this route and they make an amazing, amazing career from going to fair to fair to fair and making an amazing bulk of money during these art fairs and being able to have a sustainable career and sell their art and enjoy meeting the people who are enjoying the work that they're creating. They offer a, a really unique opportunity to connect with your audience, build a following, and receive immediate feedback on your work. The art fair route is fantastic for artists that enjoy direct interactions and that want to establish a presence in your local art community. Do the fairs. It's also a really great, uh, it's a really great way to test the market and it might lead to future opportunities. Now, lastly, but certainly not least, section four, let's talk about the e-commerce route. Now, with the rise of online platforms like Saatchi Art, Etsy, or even building your own website, selling your work online has never been more accessible than it is today, especially with Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and YouTube. It gives you complete control over how you market and sell your art. And it's going to allow you to reach a global audience from the comfort of your own home or your own studio. This path is ideal for entrepreneurial, tech savvy, marketing savvy, ready to invest time into digital marketing. It requires really strong branding and an understanding of who your um, who your target audience is. But the remarks can be significant, especially if you're looking to build an independent art career. This this is really good. E-commerce is really also good for independent artists. You just kind of got to be careful and keep a balance, you know, if you're trying to go the independent route, but still want to work with galleries. So keep this in mind. These different routes are perceived in terms of prestige. And I want you to keep that in mind because a lot of artists, you know, want that prestige so i want you to understand that these different routes are perceived in terms of prestige in the art world and i'm not telling you to care about prestige i'm just telling you it's there the gallery route for example is often seen as the pinnacle of success in the art world having your work in galleries like the abc's the a list the b list the c list galleries it comes with a very specific prestige it comes with a certain level of recognition that many artists aspire to have However, access to these galleries is extremely competitive and it requires more than just talent. It involves networking, getting involved. It involves persistence. It involves having an online presence. It involves so many things just to get there. Your work has to be consistent. Your voice has to be consistent. They have to also believe that they can sell your work. So don't ever get it twisted. You might be the most talented, intuitive artist that has ever existed in the world but galleries are profit-based companies they are and although they love art they love talking about art they're not just there to talk colors and rainbows they're also there to sell your work so keep that in mind on the other hand the e-commerce route might not carry the same prestige as the gallery path but it offers something really valuable which is autonomy selling your work online allows you to reach a global audience but it's not without its challenges building a self-sustained audience and Managing your own marketing and standing out in the online crowded space, it it requires a lot of marketing and a lot of consistency. The the art fair route, the same. You have to travel a lot to these different art fairs and hope that after you pay these booth prices or that you accept it into this fair, that you do really good that day. So these are all bet on yourself type situations and you have to be ready to bet on yourself. The independent route has its own unique rewards and its own unique challenges. The independent route gives you the creative control of your exhibitions and your career, but it's also very, very, very demanding. And you have to be really focused on your career and the trajectory you're going, the choices and the decisions you make. It's all about the choices you make. No route is easy. The truth is no route is easy. Each one has its own set of hurdles to overcome and rewards to reap. The key is 
to best choose the path that best fits your goals, your lifestyle, and what you want out of your career. Don't feel pressured to follow a route just because it's seen as prestigious. Forget that, get that out of your head because what matters the most is finding the path that resonates with you and resonates with your vision as an artist. And I just want you to remember, if you are aiming for any of these paths, any of these paths, you do not have to navigate it alone. You got people like me that's giving you this information. That's, and, and remember, I'm giving you this information from my perspective and from my experiences. You have books out there that you can read, okay? You can read How to Become a Successful Artist. is another book by Magnus Resch that I think you guys should read. Read this book. Figure it out. You guys have to read and learn and read and learn and read and learn. Also, I'm having an upcoming class. I already told you about it. A blueprint for success for new artists. Again, guys, that's happening October the 19th. I hope that you guys can attend, can make it. It's designed to give you the tools and the strategies you need to succeed, no matter which path you choose as a new artist. So sign up using the link in the description. And speaking of support, I want to invite you again to join the growing community on Patreon because it's a space where you can connect with me, I can connect with you, you can connect with other artists, and you can receive personalized feedback and an access of wealth of resources designed to help you grow your career. So if you're looking for artwork critique sessions, that's there. I'll critique your artwork. Um, there are sessions that you can engage in and submissions you can engage in to where I'll critique your artwork. You'll also get access to curated library of resources, including raw videos and me taking you on my journey and my process as I work with artists and I plan exhibitions and I write articles, et cetera, et cetera. But not only will you see my process, you'll see the artists in their process. You'll see how they're planning their own exhibition, how they're working with me to plan their exhibitions, how they're working with me to plan to map their career, okay? But not only will you see my process, you'll see the artists in their process. You'll see how they're planning their own exhibitions, how they're working with me to plan their exhibitions and map their career. There'll be lots of templates that will help you in your artistic en endeavors. We also hold Q and A sessions where you can ask questions and get advice on financial planning to portfolio development, et cetera, et cetera. It's a supportive environment where you can refine your craft, learn new strategies and connect with others who are on the same journey as you. So if it sounds like something you need and you want, you're trying to find your people, go on over to my Patreon, which I call the Dear Glory Collective. I would love to see you there and help you take your art career to another level. And if you're planning an exhibition and you need a little help getting started, I already spoke about this. I'm doing a 30 minute session called Effective Exhibition Planning on October 16th. It is free, sign up for that, the link is in the bio. But remember, all of those resources, those webinars, those masterclasses, those are also gonna be in your Patreon. So take everything into consideration, okay? And don't forget to download the Career Path Worksheet and Checklist from the description below. It's a powerful tool that will help you outline your goals, create an action plan, and track your process as you navigate your career. This is your journey. This is your career, and you're responsible for it. I'm just here to support you in every step of the way. I'm also here to continue learning with you. So please leave your thoughts, your disagreements, your ideas, your disagreements, your agreements, in the comments below maybe you've seen my my one of my latest videos i've been responding to your comments via video i'm responding to a lot of you guys's comments i can't respond to all of them but please leave your comment maybe i'll respond to it and if you know another artist who might benefit from this video or benefit from from any of these resources send them this video tell them to check it out tell them to watch the video and if they don't watch the video tell them to download the resources or come to the webinar you know, something is here to help you. So take control of your art career. It's your career. Take control of it and just keep on the path to glory. This is Dear Glory. I'm Mariah Lees and I'm out y'all. I love y'all. Peace. I really want to thank you guys for being here and just listening to me ramble about the art world all of the time. Like who creates, who has made 100 videos? I've made 90 videos about all of this stuff. 90 videos. That's insane. You gotta be a crazy person. So I guess I'm a crazy person and I guess you guys are crazy here with me. Stay on the path to glory. We're almost there. Thank y'all for being here. Love y'all. Y'all have a good day, a good night. Peace.